Welcome back YouTube, VST here with SPC Tech and this here is the second stable update for the Galaxy Z Flip 4. Now bear in mind guys, the latest updates introduce only July security patches and yeah, here we have something different, it's September, so it's still good, but today is the 11th of October guys and we are still Still running a bit behind and that's something that I don't really like when I got my hands on the Ultra Samsung were doing really a better job in terms at least of keeping up with the security patches but this year is the latest stable only second firmware for the Z Flip it is still running One UI 4.1.1 on Android 12 and the version is AVIA it is 1300 megabytes let's see what the new changes are overall stability of your device has been improved and the security of your device has been improved as well and of course a software update can include but it's not limited to some very nice stuff that I always put in the change log and this time there is a link so this here is my model again Android 12 you have the release date you have the security patch level and you just have these two main big points guys so this is what it is now I am going to do a series of tests and what you are going to do guys you are going to subscribe for my channel if you're not already subscribed but if you are thank you very much and if you're not and you're watching this video for the first time I do a lot of videos like this and if that's your thing then make sure to subscribe something important every time I do update my Samsung phones firmware guys I use the good guardians app and namely the galaxy app boost the galaxy app booster will actually go through your applications and it will optimize them and you have the option to optimize only the one that you have been using in the past 30 days or everything and they claim to up your performance by 50 percent and etc well all right i mean those looks very nice but it's probably just some sales talk but anyway it does really do something so better do it and now let's start the testing guys the first thing of course we're gonna see and anticipate is a bit on the animations and i always do start with the home screen animations okay wow that's really flawless guys. Have in mind that the Z Flip 4 uses only the FHD Plus display contrary to the S22 Ultra where we have higher resolution, but it does also use the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which is actually very fast. And we can just see this, like this animation is never so smooth on my S22 Ultra, unless of course I do change it from WKH2 to FHD Plus. So right now I would say that the home screen animation, this one is, is very nice. So let's just try to see what happens if we go down and scroll to access the app drawer. Wow, it just feels perfect, guys, right? And by the way, guys, you can tweak this, right? If you want to access your notifications instead of this, then you can just hold your finger like this, go inside the settings, right? And then just click on swipe down for the notification panel. Now, every time if I go back, I swipe like this, guys, I'm gonna get access to my notifications. And um, yeah, let's just test how they will pop up. And of course, also the quick settings. All right. It is very much responsive right now. So yeah, not that bad at all, guys. Let me just try to see. You can just make them go away like this. Yeah, I think animation wise, what we can see on the home screen, what we can see in terms of notifications, this seems to be quite okay. But let me go into that direction to reach actually my goal now. Okay. Yes, first time was not that great, but right now I would say scrolling is just smooth. Okay, but the first time, okay, that's, I would say that's not a problem at all. Let me just go and try to access all of my other screens. Yeah, seems to be quite nice. Now going up will give me access to my app drawer. Okay, all nice and flawless. Here, the search button. So it works okay, volume rocker going up and down. Yep. Not a problem at all, guys. And let me just also test what will happen when I twist the phone like this, because you know you have this option as well, right? So you are actually able to just use both portrait and landscape orientation. No lux at all. Feels flawless. Now I'll leave the phone like this, guys. Let me just go and access. Wow. This feels very smooth, guys. But again, I think it's a combination of two things. First, it's only FHD Plus in terms of display resolution. And then, of course, it's Snapdragon and it's not Exynos. So this one is quite nice notifications quick settings okay not a problem at all volume rocker yep also to the side okay and let me just yep let me just scroll down through all my screens yeah yeah that's actually actually very very good guys you see this right now feels like the proper experience like the way it should be search boxes going back to this mode all right so in terms of home screen animations i think we are safe you might know 
the DZT4 has only 8 GB of RAM and not 12, so all the time I'm doing this test, I do also check the memory usage. So right now we have 4 to 3 GB available, the performance is normal, and I can just go back to one day and see my usage. So I think it's pretty much okay. It seems that we still have 5 GB of memory to access, which I would say is quite nice. Now guys, I wanna move to folders opening, all right? I really like this blur effect and the fact that also some of the elements just pop up, it's really very, very lively. Okay, now, while I'm here guys, let me open the weather. Some very nice animations from the default Samsung application, so okay. And we are now trying to see apps opening and closing. Very fluid, by the way, not a problem at all. Okay, so yep, let me just try to do like this. Okay, yeah. No starter whatsoever, really impressive. All right, opening it. Yeah, very nice. See this icon, guys, the way it moves, right? Okay, some very nice animation. Now let me just move it there. I just wanna see how the animation is going to get open. All right, it follows, it follows. The clock, it's not centered, that's good. This move will bring me back on my home screen. And now, guys, it's time to open some of the apps. I'm gonna start with Telegram, all right? Apps opening, yeah, not bad, guys, see? It's really flawless, almost flawless, I would say. Yeah, and doing this test, by the way, yep. Let's now open the Messenger, all right. Messenger, yeah, Messenger is not that bad at all, guys. You can just see how it works. And I'm just trying to do some random moves to see if it's gonna lag or not. Okay, now let's just go and open Facebook. Wow, and the loading times is really crazy, guys. I mean, it's Snapdragon, right? So loading times, absolutely stunning. I'm just trying now to open Instagram, so opening Instagram. Let me now try to access the camera there. So this is the back camera. Okay, back camera, front camera. All right, yeah. It's not ideal, guys, but I would say it's quite nice. Let's now try to open Snapchat. All right, it's very quick and switching the cameras. Back, front, okay, yep. E all right, see guys here, this is what is started, guys. Just minimizing the camera. If I'm now on the front camera and I try to do something, okay. The first time it was not ideal, now it's a bit better. All right, still not really what we kind of expect. Let's now also open TikTok. All right, so TikTok is there as well. All right, let me just open here. This one, also open the camera and minimizing TikTok with the camera on was a bit better, all right? And now I'm gonna take the phone in my hand, guys, and now let's just see camera opening, all right? Okay, first time, not so good. Switching to the front camera. So guys, all these apps that do involve the use of a camera, the first time that you're closing them, it doesn't really feel so good. And of course, it's not really something big, it's a minor thing, but it's still not yet perfect. Okay, guys, now let's just see the written menu. All right, this one is flawless, I think on One UI 4.1, one and also on One UI 5, so not a problem at all. Very smooth, no reason for failure, by the way. You don't have the option to put it on a screen like on One UI 5, open it in the pop-up window on a split screen, but you can close it all. And now guys, what I can do, I can go inside the gallery and just try to see the animation. So let me just try to see gallery animations, okay? Is it good, is it bad? Yeah, not so bad at all, guys, all right? And um, okay, I'm just trying to make it better. I'm just let me just try to make it really small. Oh, okay, and now we had the lag, guys. Well, I just have a lot of pictures, guys, but the thing is, it's not so smooth at all. Um, when you try to zoom it like this, and if you go to the max scale, it's a bit better, but you know, we've seen worse, so okay, let's not complain, let's agree that it is still not so bad. And now guys, let me close off everything and start our favorite, and also I know, I guess, Samsung's favorite Geekbench test. Well, as expected, when you update your firmware and then you decide to do Geekbench on a Samsung device, at least the one that I own, yeah. The result is not great, guys. This is really subpar result. I was getting up to 1,200 and etc. This is pretty much the normal result that you're gonna get. But okay, we all know that benchmarks sadly are not so relevant, right? It, things like Geekbench at least. So maybe we can also try to do a 3D mark starting. All right, let me just check how much my device was able to score. The overall score is 2,268. The average frame rate per second, almost 14. Yeah, this is my score versus other popular devices. Good to know that my score is better than almost every other Xiaomi Mi 10 Pro there. So that's not so bad at all. Your score versus other devices, 
So yeah, I'm scoring better than most of the devices, 66%. The performance monitoring, guys, the battery only dropped with 1% and the temperature increased from 35 to 39%, which is actually a bit better from what I've seen on the S22 Ultra using the Exynos. Frame rate, 5 FPS to 20 FPS. And with that said, guys, I will conclude now my September review. It all feels nice and smooth with these occasional stutters that apparently are playing Samsung very noticeably when using some applications that have the camera open in the viewfinder. Let me demonstrate. This time it was smooth, but I'm gonna do one more test just to be sure. So let me just try to open also Telegram and I'm gonna try to add a new post. And you see guys, now I'm on the camera, I'm gonna close it. Okay, now it was a bit better guys, so all right. Let just give the benefit of doubt to Samsung again. And hopefully guys, they will make it perfect in the future. And with that said, VST over and bye.